Howdy y'all, it's Ryan from RNA Music, favorite mom and pop guitar shop and music lesson studio deep in the heart of Texas, which is where I'm at. Yeah! And it's new stuff day. I'm gonna open a package. Let's go. probably gonna hear Mrs. RNA on the other end of the building doing voice lessons, but we're still gonna film this because I wanna open this right now and I can't wait any longer. I got something in the mail from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, let's see what it, where's my knife? Let's see what it is. Okay, I'm not gonna knife it, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna rip it. <laughs> we're gonna, I, I had an idea of what it was, but let's see, what the heck face. What we've got here is some new caps from Boogie Street Guitars. Established 1999, I got some stickers. I got three new Boogie Street hats. I got a red one, I got a green one, and a green one. Ha ha ha, very cool. Okay, so if you guys don't know, and some of you may not know, Boogie Street Guitars, uh, owned by Eric McKenna, was one of the first stores that I can remember, or retailers, that utilized YouTube a lot. So I, I came across Eric and Boogie Street Guitars back, I think it was 2005, you know, 2005, 2006. The very early days of YouTube, and um, the story is Eric was a basically an online guitar dealer back when that wasn't quite as common as it is now. And okay, all right. I'm very particular about my hats and they gotta fit just right. Eric specialized um, particularly in Washburn guitars and not just any Washburns, but the USA Custom Shop guitars, and so he actually worked a little bit with Dime Bag Daryl um, before Dime, uh, his contract with Washburn ended and he went back to Dean Guitars. But so some of the last, last USA custom shop and USA production Dime Guitars, Eric was uh, the guy selling those. And he also did a couple of runs of dealer exclusive limited dish guitars back then, and I actually have a couple of those. I have a couple of those here. We're gonna show you some of those right now. Here's one I really like. This is uh, called the Washburn, um, the Fallen Idol. This particular body shape was called the Idol. Came out with Washburn. It's very much, uh, you know, reminiscent of a single cut. It's really a single and a half cut. Anyway, this one's super fat, thick, like a Les Paul would be. It's got the Tony Iommi crosses an abalone, and this guitar was basically one of Eric's, uh, kind of a tribute to the great Tony Iommi, who was one of his heroes. This one is numbered, number 29 of 50, so they had 50 of these made. This was, you know, out of Korea, South Korea, to be specific. South Korea, this is a limited edition, one of theirs, and uh, I got this one, I love this. First guitar I ever got from Eric was this, which is uh, the Elite. Idle, same thing, very thick body, like two inch thick. Think, you know, fat, like a Les Paul, right? The fat, full thickness, better cutaway upper fret access. Flame maple transparent black top, freaking love it. This is like my favorite, my favorite finish on a guitar, honestly, is this transparent black see-through flame top. EMG Zach Wild pickups. It's got a little uh, boogeyman there on the first fret special inlay. This is uh, number 12 of 50. So this is a limited run import model, high-end import models um, from South Korea, <laughs> not North Korea. Ebony Fredbert. All right, this is the first one I ever ordered from Eric. And the Pièce de Résistance is this bad boy. Now this bad boy is actually a USA custom shop Washburn made in the USA Custom Shop. This one was also a limited one. This is number eight 
of 13. You can see uh, there's Brutus. Brutus the Boogeyman <laughs> with his bowler hat. This one is affectionately named the Ocho. Why do we call it the Ocho? Because it's number eight of 13. Deep carve. Paduke top. Oh man. This is this is like the pinnacle of the pinnacle. The USA Custom Shop stuff was just fantastic. I mean, I'd put the USA Custom Shop Washburn. Again, this is the era 2005 to 2000 eight or nine or, or ten you know in that era i mean they were putting on guitars that would easily compete and surpass gibson compete with prs compete with anybody who was doing usa custom shop stuff the custom the custom shop stuff is just dumb so i have three guitars that are basically exclusive to or were exclusive to boogie street guitars and um uh, i gotta say i was frequent on the forums he had a forum called the boogie board I've got to take a quick second <clears throat> and talk about the boogie board real quick because um, the Ocho, I would not have if it wasn't for the boogie board and the friendships I've made there um, back in that time. And a lot of those friendships, friendships transition from an online guitar forum to real life friendships. And um, two of these boogie street guitars I got, I got from former members of the boogie board. Like I wouldn't have the fallen idol if it wasn't for Texas Dave. <laughs> and I would not have the Ocho if it weren't for my friend Nick, who I met uh, on the boogie board and have became friends in real life. Um, and I love Nick, he's just a wonderful guy and his family is just great. And uh, he's an awesome dude. And you know, again, I would not have the Ocho if it were not for Nick. And so I have to say, not only um, is Eric great, <laughs> but the community of people that we came together and became friends. And uh, a lot of times that would kind of happen. Each, you know, a, a board member would work out a deal and, you know, get a guitar to another board member. So I gotta say, big shout out. Thank you to Texas Dave and of course to Nick, man. Thank you so much. Because again, I wouldn't have two of these guitars. And this is a tiny collection compared to some of the guys who had just massive BSG collections. Like Burner, who um, passed away uh, a year or two ago, had a phenomenal collection of Washburns. And anyways, just some tremendous, tremendous people. It's funny that you meet digitally and then you make a connection and you can become friends. So that's a pretty special thing where I've met some amazing people from all over the planet who also shared a passion for <laughs> these guitars and uh, the custom shop stuff that he was doing with Dime. Did some stuff with um, Scott Ian of Anthrax. Uh, did some stuff with Paul Stanley of Kiss, right? So um, some really cool stuff. And I actually learned a lot from Eric about the business side of this and selling guitars and things. And uh, he's become a good friend over the years. And uh, the, the Boogie Street stuff, the, the guitar side of the business has kind of simmered down after, gosh, how many years he's been doing it. He's kind of transitioned into another industry and he's very successful at that. But there is a small army <laughs> of Boogie Street um, fans and friends and family all over the world that uh, we still remember those days and remember um, the good times we had on the forum. Um, back then, Eric was putting out YouTube videos and this was really the first person I watched that did like a, a guitar specific YouTube channel. He would put out videos. Uh, when they would get new shipments of guitars in, he would show them off, unbox them. He would have somebody play them. Um, Freddie Kowalo, who was the guitar tech for Zach Wilde, Back in the day, Fred has gone on to be a tech for Megadeth and Shine Down, and I think he's with Motley Crue right now. And I've met Fred a couple times, and Fred is awesome. And so Fred was the guy there who would set up the guitars, and he would be in the videos. And I was just fascinated, like watching those YouTube videos. Literally, the guy just talking about guitars and showing them, and go, "Hey, would you like to buy one? We can get you. We can get you taken care of." And this is again, this is back 0506. I think. Yes, so I think like January, like January, February of 07 is when I got my first one. But but Eric was really the first person that I kind of 
maybe influenced me on the YouTube journey with guitars um, and having a guitar-based YouTube channel. And then of course, as a small one-man operation, you know, inspired me in a lot of ways. And I've gone to him for advice in the retail side of things over the past couple of years. And he's, he's always given me really solid advice. Sometimes I listened. <laughs> Sometimes I was like, I think it'll be okay. They said this is gonna happen. And he's like, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, let's just, you know, here's, here's what I suggest. <laughs> Anyways, and you know, one of the reasons we came out with a, um, a limited run a RNA music guitar with Chris Mitchell guitar, CMG, limited edition RNA numbered guitars, was I was really inspired by what Eric did back in the day with the limited run washburn stuff. Anyways, long story long, but uh, I still have quite a collection. Still have three Boogie Street guitars, and I have, these are vintage, quite a collection of original Boogie Street hats. I like this one a lot. I recently washed it because it was pretty grimy. And then I actually, I actually have. So this is the old school green. I mean, and I have an old school red. Like these are vintage from back in, uh, I say vintage there, you know, 2007, 2008 Boogie Street hats. I actually have one more. I have the black one. It's black and it's got some yellow writing on it. I still wear these hats to this day. And of course I have a bunch of Boogie Street t-shirts that I don't really wear anymore because most of those were 2x shirts and now I'm a much smaller guy than I was I used to be now I wear like a large <laughs> but I have a collection of old school 2000s boogie street hats so anyways Eric uh, I guess saw me posting on the Instagram on the grams wearing my boogie street swaggity swag so I want to say thank you, Eric, so much for the stickers. I love them. I put the stickers on my stuff. I like to put the stickers on like my toolboxes here at the shop that keeps all my guitar repair tools and, and things like that. So stickers are great. Uh, thank you for the fresh, the fresh hats. Bro, it's the same. Are these like new old stock or are these new new? That, that's what I want to know. You can never have too many hats, right? I actually like the way this one fits. Let me try on the red one because the red one, my original red one, Oh, uh, yeah, my original red one was like a little bit bigger. My son texted me. Yeah, the red one I think was orig originally a little bit deeper than the green one. Let's try. Oh man, so exciting. I have so many great memories from the mid 2000s and being on the forum, the boogie board and uh, watching all of Eric's old school YouTube uh, videos about the guitars and things. And a lot of guys on there had like massive collections of, you know, Washburn Idols and the, the Washburn Dimes and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, you, you'll see like Ola England has one of the, the Cross guitars. So that was a result of Eric, right? So they had, you know, there was the Southern Cross, which was the USA Dime. And then Eric at Boogie Street Guitars did one of these limited run imports called The Cross. Right? I think there was there might have been 50 of them and they were numbered and they were made in South Korea. It was like kind of a replica of the Southern Cross. It was like an import Korean version of the Southern Cross. I never got one of those. They had one called the Boogie Bolt. It was like the black, there was they had the black one and it had abalone lightning bolts and they had a blue one with abalone lightning bolts. So every now and then you'll see a Boogie Bolt <laughs> floating around and it's like, Man, I wish, 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 like back then I had, had more disposable income at the time and I totally would have bought a couple of those. Because my favorite dime guitars are the Washburn era dimes. I mean, he was with Washburn for 10 years and really you could say at the pinnacle, at the apex of Pantera's popularity is when he was playing Washburns, you know. And I was never able to get one and now they're kind of difficult to find. Every now and then if I, if I find the Boogie Street Idols, I definitely try to snag one if I can. Finding the Washburn Dimes is crazy, and they're they're crazy expensive if you come across one. And most people don't want to sell theirs. I'm like, why, why would you? I wouldn't want to. I'll put a link to Eric's website down below. Uh, he is a realtor and a podcaster in the Pittsburgh area these days, but I still think there's still links. You can still get some Boogie Street swaggity swag if you want. There's a lot of us guys from back in that day and girls who, um, just had a wonderful community there and we treasure it 
and we still we still sport our boogie street swaggity swag so go check go check it out I'll, I'll link to it down below you can go check it out i don't know how much of the uh the story he has of all the backgrounds but you know we still talk pretty regularly and i'm like so you ever thinking about doing some guitar stuff again he had some ideas he had some ideas that never completely you know saw the light of day that are like you know that would be pretty cool there's just, you know never say never so anyways thank you guys for watching me unbox i figured it was hats i could feel it. I was like it's hats i'm like oh i wonder what kind of hats they are now i have some more i think angela's gonna take one though she's probably gonna steal the red one from me she might take the green one i don't know thank you eric very much for you know sending these i love them i still have my old school ones but you know how it is if you have a favorite hat and uh you know it gets worn and wore out and then it gets to where you can't really wear it anymore you're like oh man I wish I'd have bought like four of these when I got this hat and you just rotate them out. So thank you, Eric, for the hats to add to the hat rotation. Appreciate you guys. Go check out Eric's stuff. And um, yeah, we'll see you in the next RNA music video. RNA music, RNA, Phoenix. I took some inspiration from, from Eric on that, honestly. So there's a little bit of Boogie Street uh, in RNA music and um, couldn't be more happy about that. All right, see you guys next video. Till then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. We need the music. We need to keep it alive for the next generation so they can experience awesome guitar things too. Bye, guys.